Hello and welcome back to another edition of Conquering My Collection. In this video I'm going to be talking about um, the film from 2020, which was, I believe, the highest grossing film worldwide of 2020, because it was 2020. It's a Japanese animated film. Uh, it is a continuation of the anime show Demon Slayer, and it is called Demon Slayer Mugen Train. Um, I don't know how to pronounce the four. De Demon Slayer K Kimetsu no Yaiba. I guess that would be how you pronounce it. Very, 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 very roughly. Um, so Demon Slayer, the movie Mugen Train or Infinity Train. Um, on the front there, you get to see um, Tanjiro and Rengoku, I believe. Uh, these two focal heroic characters in this movie. So the story of this is, is very much just a, a direct continuation from the, the show. So when I heard about the kind of rumblings of this movie being a, a record-breaking movie and stuff, um, I think it is the, the highest grossing Japanese film in Japan of all time, beating out, I believe, Spirited Away by uh, Hayao Miyazaki. I was like, wow, that's that's a that's a big deal. What's all this this Demon Slayer thing? And then sometime later, I saw that it was on Netflix. The first series of Demon Slayer was on the UK Netflix. Also, the fact that this movie is set on a train. I love train movies. If that was a subgenre, it's my favorite subgenre. I love films set on trains. Wasn't even sure if this film was really set entirely on a train, and it mostly is for the most part. I'd say um, set on a train, but um, yeah. So I I was intrigued. I was kind of like. You know, do I really want to watch a whole season of, of television just to prime myself for this one movie? And I'm glad that I did, but it took me two attempts to watch the show. So basically what happened, well, I'm just going to put this these things back inside the cases because it's been put in the wrong way. And I could feel that it was in the wrong way. And that's kind of the anal retentive collector freak that I am. So I'll just do that now. Ah, feels much better now. Okay, so... Um, where was I going? I completely forgot. Uh, so it took me two attempts to watch the show. The show is about this this young man called uh, Tanjiro. And Tanjiro, at the beginning of Demon Slayer, it's absolutely fucking brutal. Get, his whole family gets murdered. Like it, It's just like gut-wrenching right from the start. Um, except for his sister Nezuko. Uh, and the story is like set in kind of like feudal era Japan as far as... Oh no, it's the, the Taisho. Not feudal era, not at all. It's the Taisho era. At the end of every episode, he's like, now for a Taisho era secret. So it's in the Taisho era. It's more like the like it's the 20s, I think. Um, there's a train, obviously, so it couldn't be set in feudal era Japan. Like, what the fuck am I thinking? Um, but it's, uh, it, regardless, um, it's, a, you know, it's set in this world where demons exist. And where you have demons, you have demon slayers. And so the demon slayers come in, and they... You know, it's a very. There's lots of stuff about the law of the demons and the demon slayers in this show and in this world. I'm not going to try and cover everything, and I'm not the expert by any means whatsoever. Um, but basically, Nezuko um, gets kind of. She's she's going to turn into. Well, she does turn into a demon, but she's able to control herself. And and Tanjiro wants to find a cure for his sister. And this is very radical amongst the Demon Slayer community that they've never seen a demon who can be kind of controlled or tamed or made to not go for human blood. Um, so the story of the first season is really Tanjiro trying to, I guess the whole, the whole story, is him trying to save his sister's life, to bring her back, the only thing he has left. And so he spends years training, like one of the more memorable kind of, like uses of character design in the show is kind of just his hands which are so calloused by how much he's trained and the beginning stages of the show i absolutely loved the storytelling was phenomenal um the visuals at times are just really beautiful to look at like some of the special moves that he pulls out with his sword they're like water special elemental moves and all these water flows and it's just absolutely stunning the music is great um, but he meets friends along the way, or kind of like, you know, um, hesitant kind of companions and allies, I, I guess you could say. Or not so hesitant in the terms of this one character called uh, Zenitsu. And Zenitsu is this very hyperactive, super like, just like mental, like, his, his, he, he, he turns the show into an anime show. 
like Zenitsu shows up and you've got like the super exaggerated eyes, you've got the uh, and like just like the crazy expressions, like that, 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 just, just, just an assault on the senses and it's so grating and it's so annoying and it really bogged down the middle of that first season for me to the point where I stopped watching because he just annoyed me so much. You had um, Inosuke, I believe, who's this kind of guy who goes around with a boar's head, covering his head as a kind of like a, a warrior mask. And he's kind of a, a kind of bold and um, loud character too, but not in an overly annoying, grating way like Zenitsu. So it put me off. So I eventually went back to it. And, and it, once you kind of get over a hump to a point, um, there's this whole like arc in the mountains, which is unbelievable once you get to the tail end of it and then the the final kind of piece of that first season is just them kind of getting ready basically and then being accepted into the demon slayer kind of um the higher tier kind of upper echelon and training for ultimately this well not even for this mission but this mission comes up where they they get to go and accompany one of the the top demon slayers which is rengoku whose specialty is fire and you see him here, this is the character. And I hope that I got that name right in Rengoku. So he's gone to the Mugen train, and so Tanjiro, Tanjiro uh, his sister Nezuko, who kind of is along with him as kind of like, he brings her along in a box, but also she, she, can, she can really like lay down some fight when she needs to, and she's there to protect her brother. She has some cognizance of what's going on, um, and how much, I guess, is part of the mystery of the show in a, in a little bit, but you can kind of there's a lot of elements with her sister which are really interesting like in terms of that dynamic of this brother who is trying to save his sister's life and she's constantly with him and he's always protecting her and it's it's very layered there's a lot of things going on in terms of that relationship i think and then he brings along with him his two companions zenitsu and uh, inosuke and so the movie picks up right where the, the kind of where the end of the first season began the first season begins with them getting on the train the train goes off um, the movie opens with um, a separate scene and then they kind of quickly redo the, the end of the first season in a way that I really appreciate because it wasn't just repeating stuff and then we get into them on the train and they meet this demon on the train who we got, we got introduced to at the end of the first season this brutal, ruthless demon and he's on the train and he's going to like take down these, these people, these, these demon slayers and the, most, the majority of the movies takes place on the train and the first act is like mostly like in their minds and there's some really interesting kind of mind fuckery going on where like the demon is putting them to sleep and kind of putting them inside these kind of situations which are kind of de deadly to them in their kind of waking life but in their dreams it's kind of it's luring them into something else and all that stuff was really really cool and then you get a reveal of like what this demon really is once once they start fighting it and that reveal was awesome because now you're like how the hell are they going to beat this thing and that's where the train kind of gets covered in this slimy substance and that's where the film really kind of let itself down a bit because you know a lot of this stuff you know i don't know the process i'm assuming the obviously again it, it it feels like beautiful 2d hand-drawn animation to me i'm sure that it's not done on cells and it's done digitally but it's still beautiful animation and there was actually some parts in the fight sequences of this film that I paused the Blu-ray and did on the PS4 kind of the frame advance where you just skip one frame at a time. And I could see where they laid like kind of repeated frames but like moved them slightly. So there isn't a new frame on the second frame. It's the same frame but the characters have moved slightly. This is kind of like the motion effect. It's really fascinating when you when you break break it down by a frame by frame basis. And if I was an animator or a budding ad animator, I'd find it even more fascinating to go through movies like that. But some of it is so fast and dynamic and, and gorgeous and colourful. I was just kinda like, I just want to see like what are the inner workings of this? I didn't have much much time to do it, but the few times I did it was really fascinating. But you know, the the, the animation and the art style, like the backgrounds are stunning. But the animations of the fight scenes in particular are absolutely beautiful. But the slime on the train was done, I'm assuming, cheaply and very crudely with CGI animation. And it showed so much. It looked like an early Pixar movie. The very little texture, you know, almost like it just felt very tacked on. I thought, ah, it's a shame. And they really lean into it for this, this big sequence. So that was one of the main things I kind of took away going, ah, oh, it's a shame. And, and I, I don't know if doing it with... 
uh, a more traditional style. Again, I don't know how much of this is done. I'm assuming it's all it's all done on computers regardless, but um, the 3D animation stuff just doesn't gel quite as well. It, it could do if they really put a huge amount of effort into the texturing. And again, I don't know these terms. I'm not an animator, but it, it jarred with very very noticeably with the rest of the the art style of the movie for me. Uh, Rangoku was a really fun character to watch evolve throughout this film. We don't really see him much in the end of the first season of the show and how they look up to him and kind of idolize him a little bit. And I like how you get these various team-up moments between a lot of the characters and I think all the characters get a time to shine. I was very glad that, <laughs> that uh, Zenitsu did not have a huge part to play in this film. Um, but the third act is really this. A new villain appears, basically, and kind of shows up at the last minute. And there's this huge battle between this this new demon and Rengoku. And it's stunning. It, it really is. Um, and the ending gets, gets a bit too saccharine for me, which, which tends to happen in, in anime films, I find, is that characters who feel emotional about stuff will be, like, bawling with tears like it's it's so emotional like and it it it, it 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 strikes a dissonant note for me where it just like i disconnect a bit when a character is so like tears just like spewing out of the eyes it's like all right like you know <laughs> so just think of dr evil tone it down a notch <laughs> But apart from that, and apart from the kind of wonky CGI slime stuff, this is a stunning film to look at. And as, as far as a continuation of the, the series, I thought it was excellent. And yeah, the way that music and silence plays into the, the beats in this, this show, this movie, um, it's just brilliant story. It's brilliant visual and oral story storytelling, I think. You get a, a lot of really great stuff from... The, the, the dynamic style of animation that comes through this. And it's it's fun. You know, the action's great, and there's some really cool visual ideas going on. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's very brutal, you know. And and kind of had been on the edge of my seat a little bit there towards the end because I didn't know where it was going to go. And I was like, whoa, is that... Really? Are we going there? Holy shit, what does this mean moving forward? Now, from what I understand, Season 2 just finished airing, I think, a few months ago. There was a big gap between, I guess, COVID... But um, season two, I think, the first seven episodes are the movie. <laughs> Just split into seven episodes. I don't know if anything is different, but obviously I guess it's kind of like for anyone who didn't watch the movie, here's the movie <laughs> in episodic chunks. And actually, another thing I don't like about the show actually is that the, the episode breaks are very random. It feels to me like this story might be better made as a series of movies. You know, take each arc that you're adapting from the manga and just do a big three-hour movie with it. Because I, I'd gladly sit down and watch an epic three-hour Demon Slayer movie rather than twenty-minute segments where literally they're about to they they start a fight with a demon and it's like, oh, here we go, and then this is a critical part of the fight, and then the credits start, and then and so I feel like I couldn't just watch an episode and then leave it because it would be like the next time I go back to it in a few days. We're right back in the fight again. Oh, oh, what fight? Oh, yeah, okay. So it was difficult for me to kind of get the rhythm, you know, of some of those things because I feel like there aren't many episodes in that first series that end on a, a nice note to stop watching. So, yeah, I, maybe someone's done that, like a, some fan edits where they've taken specific arcs and made longer kind of things out there. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I mean, you get recaps, but, you know, it, it, it is a bit jarring at times, so I'm intrigued to see... I guess I'll probably wait for a while, see if it, see if the second series comes to um, uh, Netflix. Um, I'm sure it's available elsewhere, but I'm in no rush because I, I, I would I would like to watch it even though it, I've already seen the movie. So I want to watch the second season as it was released, so I'll probably just wait for a while and then watch it and catch up with the the new stuff beyond the, the Mugen Train arc. But there we go, that's my thoughts on Demon Slayer and Mugen Train. I'm very much a... I wouldn't even say a newbie... Demon Slayer fan, because um, I wouldn't even call myself like a fan of it per se, but I really, really like it. I mean, I, I'd say I love it. I do love the the story. It's very engaging to me. Some of the characters are a bit, well, just the main character, Zenitsu, is very annoying to me. Um, I like his moments where he shines. Those moments are great, but they are few and far between and by design, so it's a bit frustrating, you know. 
and I'm invested. I want to see where the story goes. Like a couple of times I've caught myself going, you know, don't look up what happens at the end, you know? So I'm, I'm intrigued to see where, where it all goes. I'm hugely invested in the character of Tanjiro and, and Nezuko just to see how that, that plays out basically. So yeah, there you go. Demon Slayer, the movie, Mugen Train. Um, absolutely loved it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, he's all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. He's, but he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...